إِنَّا سَنُلْقِي عَلَيْكَ قَوْلًا ثَقِيلًا إِنَّنَا شِئَةَ اللَّيْلِ هِيَ أَشَدُّ وَطْأًا وَأَقْوَ مُقِيلًا إِنَّ لَكَ فِي النَّهَارِ سَبْحًا طَوِيلًا وَاذْكُرْ إِسْمَ رَبِّكَ وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم So what we were saying that our nafs has its desires and this fight with our nafs is very strong, it's very difficult and indeed you know, whoever tries to dominate his nafs only that person understands truly that what does it mean to fight with your nafs Subhanallah, it's very sometimes when people start developing themselves and they start doling their gaze, you know, if uh, there's a girl walking around, you know, Subhanallah, some people feel as if they're going to get a heart attack if they're going to lower their gaze. Nafs says, no, 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 it doesn't matter, why don't you have a look? One last time, oh, after that, I'm not going to look. But Subhanallah, this fight, this struggle within ourselves, very, very hard indeed. Controlling yourself, somebody is not talking to you properly and you know, just letting it go, not replying back, controlling your anger. Allahu Akbar. Only people who try to control themselves understand what does it mean to fight with your nafs. Allahu Akbar. Very difficult thing. And for that we need to go to go through that exercise, that gym, as I was saying before, that you have to build our muscles, the spiritual muscles in order to control ourselves. And that, you know, the the sohbat of the mashayikh, the khanqas, that they, you know, you go and sit in their company. SubhanAllah, now our mashayikh, yani the silsila that we are from, we don't, we don't really uh, take people through any mujahida, any struggle. As I was mentioning to you before, I don't know who was there and who was not, but the people in the past, the story that I was telling you, people will really take their students, their murideen, through a lot of struggles, physical struggle, in order to crush their nafs. But now our mashayikh don't do that, because seriously, if we start doing that, you know, maybe I'll be talking to some ants here, uh, or cockroaches. People will not come, because as I said, that in, in the past people had that talab. People had that talab to go and travel distances to go and sit in the company of the mashayikh to develop themselves. Now mashayikh are traveling throughout the world and taking this, you know, this ilm of the heart to people and really, honestly, literally begging people to come on board. Very, very strange states of people these days. So these, in this day and age, people, our mashayikh don't take people through any physical struggle. But one thing that they do is that they t- develop that love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hearts of the people. They develop the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hearts of the people. You know, there are two ways that you can force yourself to do certain things. One is you just go against your nafs. Right? For example, please come a little forward so that if anybody is coming, inshallah ta'ala can sit at the back. A little forward. Jazakumullah. It's always good to sit close, inshallah. I always tell people I don't bite anybody, don't hit anybody, don't even have a stick. <laughs> Kids, come forward at the back. Jazakumullah. Inshallah. See, there are two ways to fix a thing. For example, this is a paper, right? Now, this paper is turned in this direction. I need to make it straight. What do I do? One thing is that I try to make it straight. What's happening? Look, still tilted. Isn't it? 
If I want to make it straight, what I'll do is I'll bend it on the other side. And now when I make it straight, now it's straight. See, it's not tilted. Right? This is exactly what Mashaikh did. That they would force people to go against their nafs. So even they would ask people not to take on halal things. Why? Because the nafs is tilted on the other side in order to make it straight. They will force people to do things which are against the nafs. And in that way the nafs would become straight. This is one way to fix the nafs. There is another way. For example, you are a newlywed. Who is married here? MashaAllah, Jazakum Allah. Majority is not. You won't understand this then. <laughs> See, for, it's your wedding night. huh? First night. And in the middle of the night, you are sleeping, your wife is sleeping, your wife suddenly gets up and says to you, Oh, I feel like eating chocolate. Huh? What, will you, what do you think? You are in deep sleep. In snoring. Deep sleep, don't want to do anything at that very time. Cold winter nights. Your wife says, first night, I feel like eating chocolate. At that day, you want to act like a man, isn't it? First impression is the last impression, isn't it? So what will you do? Because of that deep love for your wife, you will do anything. It means like killing your sleep, let it, let, let's kill your sleep. It means like going into that cold winter night, does not matter, I'm going to go in that cold winter night. Uh, you'll go and search for any 24-7 Asda, uh, we'll go in there and we'll get, get a chocolate for her, right? And she'll be so happy. Why did you do that? You did think against your nafs, right? You didn't feel like getting up in the middle of the night. You don't feel like going into that cold winter night. Still you did that because of that love that you had for your wife. First night, at least people have love for their wives in the first night. What happens later, you know, so you never know. Like in first night at least. Huh? So this is what, ha- what love does to people. When people have that deep, deep, deep love, they can go against their nafs. You tell your nafs, all right, Mr. Nafs, I'm not listening to you. She's my wife. I love her so much. Let me do whatever she wants. By the way, it's a good thing to love your wives even later on. Do whatever they ask for. Inshallah ta'ala. Seriously. Allah Ta'ala wants that from us. That we will do, Allah Ta'ala wants that we do whatever she wants. Inshallah. Alright? So inshallah do tawbah from not loving your wives. Inshallah. So, this is another thing that we can do. Always eat, drink with your right hand. This is the Khankai system. Alright, so I'm not going to let anybody do anything wrong here. Sorry. But inshallah it's a message for everybody. So, this is what our mashayikh do. Our mashayikh in this day and age, they try to develop that love of Allah Ta'ala in the heart. So when you develop that love of Allah Ta'ala in the heart, then whenever the nafs wants to do anything against the order of Allah, we tell, our root tells our nafs, sorry Mr. Nafs, I'm not doing this against the order of Allah. I love Allah, so why should I do anything against Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's commandments? Why should I do anything against the sunnah of my beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? This is our spiritual gym. Our spiritual gym is in reality developing that love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't ask anybody to eat their favorite food, or to leave their favorite food. We don't ask anybody to leave their sleep. We don't ask anybody to leave anything that is within the permissible bound of Sharia. Not at all. All that we want from people is to come sit in the company, in the sohbat, listen to the listen about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, get that spiritual attention from, from their shaykh, and then do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more zikr you do, more the love of Allah ta'ala will develop in your heart. Right? For example, you know, if I start giving you the fadail of ice cream right now, and if I start telling you, you know, there is an ice cream, what's your favorite ice cream? I forgot. I asked you, I think. Ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's. That's the best ice cream here. SubhanAllah. I told you, England is a village. We have better ice creams in the way. <laughs> SubhanAllah. The Ben and Jerry's is their best ice cream. I'm kidding. So, you know, whatever. 
I start telling you that Ben and Jerry's ice cream, you know, straw, which are your favorite flavor? Strawberry. You know, it's beautiful. Have you ever seen the box? And when you open it, wow, it is such beautiful. You know, the color is so amazing. If I start giving you the fadail of ice cream right now, I'm sure that maybe many of you will feel like eating ice cream right now. You will possibly go back and, and you know, will will eat ice cream at Suhoor. Very highly likely, right? This is what zikr, this is zikr. Zikr means reminder. Zikr is a reminder. I start reminding you as to how good is the ice cream, how good is the chocolate, and many of you will then start craving for that chocolate or ice cream. Very natural. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do the zikr of your Rabb a lot. And inshallah we'll cover these ayat in a minute, in a few minutes. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that we remember Him all the time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the people of Allah are those, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ They are those who do the zikr of Allah, standing, sitting and laying down on their sides. Every single minute, every single second, they are doing the zikr of Allah. There are only three states of people can be in. They are either standing, they are either sitting, or they are either laying down. There is no fourth state that people are in. Allah Ta'ala wants that we do the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. What happens as a result? That you develop the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart. This is what happens as a result of the zikr. So this is what our mashayik say. They do zikr all the time. Either there are a few zikr that you force yourself into, and, and then there is another thing which is called wukuf qalbi. And wukuf qalbi is that your heart is stationed on the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time, despite of the fact that you're doing things, but you know, you're always remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, as, as there is a background music running. For example, you go to the mall, there's a background music running, right? But do you, I mean, are we listening to the music? We are not. But still there is something going in the background. I'll give you another example. For example, that there is a mother and her son goes to the school. Say it's the first day. Amen. Now she loves her son so much in the first day of his school and while he is, she is doing all the household work, she's cleaning the house, cooking the food, but at the back of her mind, she is thinking about her son. She is thinking about, oh, my son must be in, her, in, in his first class, you know, oh, it's only two hours left for, this, for my son to come back from school. When he's going to come back from school, I'm going to ask him, how did the, school, how did the first day go, right? Always thinking, although she's not stopping anything. She's not stopping doing anything, but she's thinking in the back of her mind as to what her son is doing. Why? Because of her love for her son. This is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, that the people of Allah are those, رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَعْيُونَ أَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ That these are those people of Allah that they are in the market. They are buying, they are selling, they are doing all of their work, but it does not stop them from the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the state that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be in. And that is what the mashayikh do. The mashayikh, they recommend people to do zikr. And when people do zikr, a lot of zikr, they get into that state of istizar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. All the time it is in the back of their head. And subhanAllah, honestly speaking, if you look into the shariat, shariat has been designed like that. All the time, there is something that is recommended by the Prophet ﷺ. First, you, you open your eyes, and the first thing is what? Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilahi nushur. Isn't it amazing? You have just opened your eyes, You're not even, you have not even gotten back into your senses, and the, the, the deen, the, the sunnah is teaching you to make a dua at that time. Now you are, you know, you, you get up, rubbing your eyes, trying to get back into your senses. And subhanAllah, what do you do normally? You go to the toilet, right? Sharia says, you're not heedless. What do you do? Make sure that you put your left foot in first. Alright, right foot, left foot, left foot. Alright, left foot. Now you go in the toilet. Now, you know, the toilet, of course, I mean... And normally, ideally speaking, in the Muslim countries, you know, it should not be facing the Qibla or having the back towards the Qibla. But subhanAllah, 
I get so upset. I go to Haramain Sharifain, Medina Munawwara, Makkah, Mukarma, and it's so amazing that the hotels there, they don't even care about that. There, there are toilet bowls, you know, either you have to face towards the Qibla or you have to have your back towards the Qibla. In our fiqh, it is not allowed both, either facing or having your back. Now, for example, you are in one of those hotels, right? I don't know how the, how the, you know, I'm very, always very happy in, in those places where the Qibla is either northeast, southeast, you know, because normally the houses are built either north, south, east or west. So then the toilet bowls are normally facing east, west, south, southeast, uh, east, west, north, or the south. So Alhamdulillah, it's always tilted. But Subhanallah, when you go there, now you have to remember that. What do you have to remember? That you know you're not going to have your face towards the qibla or your back towards the qibla. You're sitting the first thing in the morning, and now you're tilted. This is the. This is what Deen teaches us. This is what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala requires from us. Please. You know, come here, there's a lot of space here, a lot of space. Don't sit on the chair, on the stairs. Come, 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 please. Here, come forward. Jazakumullah. Come. Come, come. Jazakumullah. So, right? Imagine, always mindful. Of the of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala of the Sunnas and Masnoon Duas entering in the toilet make a dua exiting the toilet right foot first making a dua or changing your clothes left first and then the right putting on new clothes or putting right first and then the left always mindful every single moment. Putting on your shoes, right first, then the left. Getting out of the house, dua. Getting into your car, dua. You can go on and on all your day. Entering into the masjid, right foot, right foot first. Always careful about ourselves as to what am I doing right now. This is what Deen teaches us. That you cannot be in the state of heedlessness at any time. Drinking, right. Right, eating, right. Saying Bismillah, making a dua at the end. Always there is something that is reminding us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why I always tell my friends that make sure that you follow sunnahs. And number two, you have to be mindful of the duas, the masnoon duas. And make sure that you read them, you say them as well at their times. There are many of us who know the duas but they don't get the tawfiq of saying them at their appropriate times. Right? We know that we have to say Bismillah before starting eating. We don't say that. We know that we have to say Alhamdulillah after we are done eating. We don't do that. Right? So we have to be mindful of that as well. And this is zikr. This is 24-7 zikr. The first thing, if there is one thing that can bring you to this istizar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to this state of wakuf qalbi, that is sunnahs and muslim duas. People often ask this question, you know, how can I reach the state of Bukuf Kalbi? How can I always be remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I always tell them this one thing. If you follow the sunnahs and you are you memorize Muslim du'as and say them at the appropriate times, that will be the that is the best thing to to bring you in that state. And of course another thing which is muraqaba. I mean inshallah I'll talk about that in a minute, inshallah. But this is what our mashayikh have recommended. We don't say and tell anybody to leave their favorite foods. We don't tell anybody to leave their sleep. We don't tell anybody to leave anything except one thing. Guess what? Sins. Leave sins. Sins is a poison. It's a disaster. Literally, it's a disaster. It kills you. It kills our spirituality. Every single sin. Our problem... Subhanallah, is that we are able to leave possibly who, whoever is working on themselves. He is able to leave say possibly 95% of the sins, but those 5%. Subhanallah, those are the killers. Poison, literally poison. You know, my shaykh always says that, you know, you have a cell phone, for example. And you have a passcode, four digit passcode. You put three digits right, that one digit you don't put it right. What will happen? Will the phone ever get unlocked? Never. Right? You try whatever, but that right number, if you don't put that, the phone is never going to get unlocked. Just like that, 
You know the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the door of the mercy of Allah ta'ala is locked. And the only key to unlock it is that we leave every single sin. And if we leave every single sin except those one, two, three that we are not able to leave, the door of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to get unlocked. This is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْ لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ If people of the community of the town, they believe and they leave every single sin. Taqwa is in reality is leaving sins. If they leave all the sins, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the barakat from the heavens and the earth. Our problem is that everybody has their issue. Everybody has their issue. You start from here, you end there, including myself. All of us have issues. You know, somebody is not able to control their eyes. Somebody is not able to control their tongue. Somebody have anger issues. Somebody have jealousy issues. Some people have arrogance issues. Arrogance, subhanAllah, people don't know that they have arrogance. Some people, they don't even know that they have arrogance. And people have different arrogance. Some people have arrogance because they're wealthy people, arrogant people. You know, they're driving their Lamborghinis and whenever somebody is driving a Mini, you know, they will look at them, you know, as, oh, what is he driving? And they will pass a comment as, a, as well. And when you ask them, you're arrogant, they will say, no, no, I'm not arrogant. But they will pass comments like these, that subhanAllah, and he as if he is low and I'm high. Right? Some people... They have, they're, they're strong and you know, a person, weak person like me, they will look at me and say, you know, look at this person and they start laughing. <laughs> SubhanAllah. The ilm, ilm, subhanAllah, it, it is such a deadly thing, the arrogance of ilm. People don't know. People don't even know. You get some ilm, oh, why should I be listening to this person? SubhanAllah, he is in year six, I've graduated, what does he think? He's going to tell me, Subhanallah. Her Mawlana Mufti Shafi Sahib, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, he used to say that Mufti Shafi Sahib, he was the Sadar Mudarris of Darul Ulum Deoban. Yeah, and he was the head head teacher of Darul Ulum Deoban. He was Mufti. He was Mufti Azam of Pakistan. Subhanallah, what a man! What an ilm! He used to say that whenever I am, I'm, I'm walking through the madrasa, and if I see somebody saying anything in the masjid, I would always stop, I will listen to it for some time, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say something through His tongue, that will benefit me. And we, subhanAllah, oh, who are you to tell me? You know, if, if another person is saying, I know everything, why should I be listening to what he is saying? This is arrogance. You know, everything is a side effect. You take medicine, there is a side effect of the medicine. You lead, open that pamphlet and it will tell you. You know, the side effect of this is it may cause harm to your kidneys. It may cause harm to your, your digestive system. It may cause harm to your respiratory system. It may cause harm to this. And by, by the way, you may die. <laughs> so far, let you start reading that. You will never take any medicine. There are side effects of everything. Right? The side effect of ilm is arrogance. This is the side effect of ilm. That is why ulama will go and sit in the company of the mashayikh to get rid of all of the diseases that come with ilm. To just cut off all of those weeds. To so, so that it's all clean, the card is clean. Subhanallah. In reality, ilm should be innama yakshallaha min ibadihi al ulama. With ilm, should, we should get the khashiyat of Allah. When the ayat are recited in front, if we know Arabic so well, we should be standing in taraweeh and we should be crying. Subhanallah. And what are we doing? We are doing tar- tarkeeb of, of the ayat in the, in the, in the taraweeh. Subhanallah. You know, oh, why is this? You know, he did not do it right. It should be nasab and not rafa. You know? This is what we are doing, standing in taraweeh. Subhanallah. With ilm, we should be crying. Literally, should be crying, crying. Heart should be moving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that. You know, when the ayat of Allah ta'ala recited, وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts tremble with fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they are all sins. Everybody has their own sin. Everybody has their own issues. So one thing that our we cannot allow, nobody can allow is sins. You can do everything. 
within the bounds of Sharia, but no sin. And this is our spiritual gym. Prophet ﷺ, the ayat that we were doing before Maghrib, is that Prophet ﷺ were forced to go through that spiritual gym. What was that gym? Prayers at night. قُمِ اللَّيْلَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا نِسْفَهُ أَمِنْ قُسْمِنْهُ قَلِيلًا أَوْ زِدْ عَلَيْهِ وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا You have to stand for the most of the night in front of Allah, almost one-fourth of the night, and recite Qur'an with tartil. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is building his muscles. For what? I'm going to give you a very weighty thing. Shariat. Very difficult thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if this Quran, this Shariat was to given to the mountains, the mountains would have been crushed into pieces. And it is given to me and you. Can you imagine what we are given? That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna aradna al-amanata ala samawati wal ard wal jibhan. That I gave this sharia to, to, to the heavens, to the, to the mountains, to the earth, and they refused to take it. Ya Allah, if it is a choice, please don't give it to us. Wahamalah al insan. Insan took it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He is zalim, he is jahil. He has oppressed himself. He has oppressed himself by taking on shariat. And he is jahil, he doesn't even know what has he taken. It is a heavy thing my friends, it's not a small thing. Subhanallah, shariat is such a heavy thing. Inna sanulqi alayka qawlan thaqila. I'm going to give you a very heavy thing. You have to build your spiritual muscles for that. And subhanallah, the way that we all live our life, we don't even care. How many of us have actually thought about that we are Muslims? And what a responsibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to all of us to live our life. We don't, even, we don't even think about it. Every single day we get up in the morning and subhanallah, what do we do? We do just live our life our way. Just chit chat, you know, gossiping all day, backbiting. And subhanallah, watching all of the films. Whenever people sit together, they just gossip, talk. This is our life. This is all what people want to do, that's it. Have we ever thought about it, that what are we doing, what's the purpose of our life, where are we going? Allah Ta'ala asks this question, فَأَيْنَ habun? Where are you going? Where are you going? Towards Allah, with that such a heavy burden on our, on our shoulders. SubhanAllah, we have to wake up. You know, when we don't follow sunnahs, do we know what does it mean? When we have these spiky hairs and you know, our jeans dropping down, halfway down the bottom and, and you know, subhanAllah, listening to music in our cars and, and doing whatever we feel like. Do we know what are we doing? We have not thought about it. Do we know where are we going? We are going in our graves. We are going to be standing, we have to be stand up, we will be standing up on the day of judgment. It's a very heavy day, it's a day when Allah, this is, subhanAllah, this is exactly, you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says later on. That, you know, this is a very, very tough day. فَكَيْفَ تَتَّقُونَ إِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ يَوْمًا يَجْعَلُ الْوِلْدَانَ شِيبًا This is the day when, you know, the, the children will become old because of the toughness of that day. This is the reality, this is where we are going. And subhanAllah, we, nothing moves our hearts. We will go, mashallah, your beautiful masjid, beautiful community, all so many ulama, so many mashayikh, I'm sure that they come and they, you must have been listening to all of this. But how many of us have actually moved? Why do we still not follow sunnahs? Why are we still not humble people? Why are we still not, you know, following shariat 100%? Why have we still not left our sins? Why do we still cheat? Why do we still lie? Why do we still get angry? Why do we still, you know, not share, not care about people? Why are we still those people that we were like five years ago? Why? Because we don't care, honestly. Inna sanulqi alayka qawlan taqila. It's a heavy burden that I'm going to give you. So please, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, make your muscles, spiritual muscles. Do that. You have to develop your muscles. And all of us have to develop our spiritual muscles. If we really want to be successful on that day. What did the ayah that I mentioned? Qad aflaha man zakaha. The person, that person is successful who is able to purify his nafs. Yani control his nafs within the bounds of the shariat. 
This is what we all need to do, my friends. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, you know, this, why I have, have I asked you to, to stand up all night in prayers and recite Quran? Number one, inna sanulqi alayka qawlan saqila, because I'm going to give you a heavy load. Number two, inna nashi'ata layli hiya ashaddu wat'an wa aqwa muqila. That this standing up at night is the most effective way to, sub, to subdue your desires. Number one, it is the most effective way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that. It is the most effective way that if you want to control your nafs and your desires, standing up at night is the most, is the, is, it is the most effective way. Inna nashia tallayl. This nashia means that nashia in reality, there are different opinions about that. But one opinion is, say the Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha also says that, that when you sleep at night and then get up and then pray, this is nashia tallayl. You know, have sleep a little bit and then get up. So that's the best way of doing the hajjat. That you sleep after Isha and close to the time of Fajr, you get up a little bit before Fajr and when then you do your hajjat, that is nashiyatul layl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying when you take yourself off your beds and stand up, make wudu, stand up in the front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of the hajjud, that is the most effective way to subdue your desires. And that is one more thing that our mashayikh do recommend, that if you really want to be, if you're really serious in developing yourself, you have to develop the develop you have to develop the the habit of the hajjud. All of us, we have to make a habit, my friends. (coughs) Alhamdulillah, this in, in Ramadan is easy. We can develop that habit and inshallah ta'ala we can take that habit outside month of Ramadan as well. So please try to get up at the time of tahajjud. I'm not saying pray 100 rakahs. Two, four rakahs, inshallah. It can be short, but do pray and then make dua at that time. This is absolutely necessary. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that inna nashi'ata layli hiya ashaddu watan. It is the most effective way to control your desires. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it also makes the speech upright. Again, Mufassirin have said different things about it, but one thing is that at that time, there is no noise. There are no cars, dri- nobody is driving any cars, everybody is sleeping. And the, the, so because there is no external noise, you know, the heart and the tongue, they are in sync. They are in sync with each other. So whatever you recite, your Qur'an that, recite, that you recite at that time of the night, it will go directly into the heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, إِنَّ نَاشِئَةَ اللَّيْلِ هِيَ أَشَدُّ وَطْأَنْ وَأَقْوَ مُقِيلًا And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives another reason, that why do you have to stand up, stand up at night? Allah ta'ala says, إِنَّ لَكَ فِي النَّهَارِ سَبْحًا طَوِيلًا Because during the day you have to do a lot of things. You have to do a lot of things, you're all busy, everybody complains about lack of time. Oh, how do I get time for muraqba? How do I get time for zikr? You know, I get up in the morning, I have to go to work at 7 in the morning, and then I come back 6 o'clock, and after that I have to do this, 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 this. You know, where do I get time for mamulat? Sure, you're right. So there is time, Allah Ta'ala is telling. What is that time, the night? إِنَّ لَكَ فِي النَّهَارِ سَبْحًا طَوِيلًا I know, oh my beloved sallallahu alayhi wa and during the day you have a lot of things to take care of. You have, you're busy all day in your work, so the night time is the best time to connect to Allah. And our mashayikh have said the same thing exactly, that all of us, when we do any, we, we do things during the day, right, people might be engaged in, in tabligh maybe, People might be engaged in madrasa and studying, right? They're, they're busy during the day. But at the very same time, we should never forget that we also have our one-to-one connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. It's not that I'm going, I'm telling everybody all what you should be doing. Where is my connection with Allah? My personal connection with Allah. That personal connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it comes during the night. That is why tahajjud is so important. إِنَّ لَكَ فِي النَّهَارِ سَبْحًا طَوِيلًا You know, during the day you're going to be busy in, in things, you have a lot of things to take care of, so make sure that you stand up at night. You develop yourself because this is the most effective way of controlling, of controlling yourself. This is your mujahida. No other mujahida. 
No cleaning toilets. Alright? For some people there is. But others, you know, no cleaning toilets. Right? By the way, keep your houses clean. Like a sidetrack, but please, I always recommend my friends that you have to keep everything clean. Alright? This is part of deen as well. We should keep everything clean. Our cars clean. We should keep our houses clean. Our rooms clean. Our toilets clean. Please. It's part of deen. It is part of deen. Don't leave a mess around you. You know, make sure that put everything in, 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 uh, in, at, at their proper place. You know, paradise, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about the paradise? What is that? Subhanallah, there will be cups that will be placed in order. The, 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 the carpets will be lied will be laid down in paradise in a, in, in a pattern. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has defined paradise, which is the most beautiful place, that everything will be in pattern, everything will be at its proper place. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, that we should be organized as well. In Allah ta'ala jameelun yuhibbul jamal, that Allah ta'ala is beautiful and He loves beauty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves beauty. So we should all make sure that everything is beautiful around us. The clothes that we wear should be clean. Should not be dirty. I'm not, we don't want expensive clothes. Nobody wants expensive clothes. But it should be clean, right? Even if you have two pairs of clothes, you know, you can, you can wear one and wash the other. And then they put, the, put on the other and, and clean the first one, right? Why do we keep the, our, our, our clothes dirty, our houses dirty? Nobody wants that you bring like a thousand pound, you know, uh, uh, decorations and wall hangings. Nobody asks you to do that. You can bring, you know, you can go to a pound store and still bring, you know, a one one pound rose, right? Or or, or a whatever, you know, flowers, whatever. You can put it. It will still make it look look good. So this is a lame excuse when people give, you know, oh, I cannot afford it. It's not about affording and not affording. It's all about your, your understanding. It's all about your care, your concern. People don't care about it. People don't have concern about it. It's not being a Muslim. Muslims should look beautiful. They should look neat. They should, everything around them is neat as well. SubhanAllah, I keep on telling people they still not understand. Still not understand this. This is part of our deen. Your outside, it tells you about your inside. Whatever you are, you are, whatever you are from outward, whatever are your surroundings, it is, it has a direct effect on your heart. And it tells about the state of your heart that how much do you care about, you, you know, yourself and your inward and your outward. So please, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us that, wants that. I don't know why did I say that? Why did I say that? What brought it? Yeah, so what I'm saying is that this is the only thing that we want struggle for. Not cleaning, not going through any other mujahida, this one mujahida, which is getting up in the middle of the night and doing the hajjah. Very important. Very, very important. And of course, leaving sins. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, وَذْكُرْ إِسْمَ رَبِّكَ وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا Second point. Point number one, get up in the middle of the night. Prophet ﷺ was told to pray the most of the night, one-fourth of the night. Second thing, oh my beloved ﷺ, what do you have to do? Do zikr. This is what I've already said. Waskur isma rabbika. What type of zikr? The zikr of the name of your Lord. And how? Watabattal ilayhi tabtila In the state of tabattul. You know what is tabattul? Tabattul is that you absolutely cut off from dunya, from the makhluk, and absolutely connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is called tabattul. Waskur isma rabbika wa tabattal ilayhi tabtila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you, there should be some time that you totally cut off yourself. It has different meanings. I'm giving you one first. That there should be a time that you are absolutely cut off from the dunya, from the makhluk, and people feeling hot? I think so. People feeling cold when they came in first. Now people feeling hot. 
Huh? No, I'm okay, but the, you know, turn off that fan, I think. The, the fan at the back. Can you turn that on? If we turn on this, then people will not be able to listen. Hey, try it. Try it. You can open the window a little bit. Inshallah. It'll make a difference, Inshallah. I'm okay. I don't mind it. I'm thinking about all of you. Maybe one by one you'll start leaving and then Inshallah will be talking to I don't know who. Take it, Inshallah. That's fine. That's fine. Don't worry. You know, your wrestling with that is not going to do anything. Yeah. Sorry. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Baskur isma rabbika wa tabattal ilayhi tabtila. That do the zikr of the name of your Rabb in the state of tabattal. So our mashayikh have said exactly that. Number two thing after tahajjud is that you have to have some time in your day that you are absolutely cut off from the dunya. Don't think about any dunyavi matter. Don't think about your wife, your husband, your children, your school, your business, your work. Don't think about that. And all what you do is the zikr. How do you do that zikr? Our mashayikh, our silsila, they say that they, the vasku isma rabbika. Do the zikr of the name of your rab. Do the zikr of the name of your rab. What is the name of Allah? Allah. Other are sifat, right? The name is Allah. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Wadud, Al-Wahhab, Al-Sattar. They are all sifat of Allah Ta'ala. The name of Allah is Allah. So where do you do zikr? How do you do zikr? You know, what is the place of zikr? Zikr, place of zikr is not the heart. Sorry, it's not the tongue. Place of zikr is not the tongue. Place of zikr is the heart. Why do I say that? For example, what is zikr? Remembering, right? Say, same example. The son goes to school. The mother is remembering the son. Say the son's name is, is Ibrahim, assume. And he comes back from the school and the mother says to Ibrahim, Ibrahim, I remembered you a lot due today. Huh? Ibrahim, I was remembering you all of these four hours that you were in school. What was the mother doing? Was mother saying all of these four hours, Ibrahim, 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 Ibrahim? No. What was she doing? She was remembering her, him in her heart. Right? This is remembrance. The place of true remembrance is the heart. The tongue is a place of expressing. Right? When we say, Subhanallah, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, this is expression. When we look at something beautiful, Subhanallah, Masha Allah, this is expression. It is just that, you know, you are remembering somebody. So for example, the husband goes somewhere to travel and the wife is always remembering and he calls her and she says, you know what, I've been remembering you, I love you so much. This, what she said with the tongue was the expression. She expressed her love through the tongue, but she was remembering him in her heart. This is people often often get confused with. The place of remembrance is the heart. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala man qalbahu Don't follow that person whose heart I have made heedless of my zikr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that. Wala man qalbahu Don't follow that man whose heart I have made heedless of zikr. That means that the place of zikr is the heart. 
So our mashaykh have said that do the zikr of the name of the Rabb in your heart. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at another place as well, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ Do the zikr of your Rabb in yourself. I Mufassirin have said, اَيْ فِي قَلْبِكَ Yani in your heart. So this is called muraqaba. In our sitsra there is a zikr called muraqaba, which is the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart, in the state of tabattul. Cutting off from creation, not thinking about anybody but Allah. So the way to do that is that for some time you close your eyes. Right? The closing of the eyes is not wajib. It's not. It's not. It's not anything. It's just recommended. Why? Because if I do it with open eyes, Subhanallah, he is climbing the stairs and I'll be looking at him. You know, he is scratching his head and I'll be looking at him. You know, he is trying to wrestle with the fan and I'm looking at him. Right? This is our problem because we are not focused at all. So that is why our mashayikh have recommended that we close our eyes so that no, we are not looking at anything. We are cut off from what's happening around us. And then sit with an intention. Intention is that Allah Ta'ala's mercy is coming on the heart. And heart is doing the zikr. Heart is doing the zikr. What sort of zikr? Vaskur isma rabbika. The zikr of the name of the Lord. As if the heart is doing the zikr, Allah, 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 and I'm listening. I'm just listening. Just like I put on a CD, and you know the CD is playing, say for example, some tilawat or nasheed, and I'm listening, right? So exactly like that, as if I'm listening to the heart doing the zikr. This is called muraqaba. Very powerful zikr. This is where the mashayikh have taken it from, our, our mashayikh. وَذْكُرْ إِسْمَ رَبِّكَ وَتَبَتَّلْ إِلَيْهِ تَبْتِيلًا This is one meaning. The second meaning is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that وَذْكُرْ إِسْمَ رَبِّكَ That do the zikr of the name of your Lord and what will you get as a result? Tabattul. What does it mean? That a time will come that you will, have, you will cut off from the dunya. In other words, you will not be concerned about what dunya is doing, what makhluk is doing. You will only be looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a, a required state. That we are not concerned about, oh, he came to me, what a beautiful speech. Alright, who cares? If he's praising me, I don't care. He comes to me, what a pathetic speech. You don't even know how to talk. Alright, who cares? Right? So, we are not looking at what makhluk is saying. We are only connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is tabattul. And what, how does it, how does it come in our heart? By doing the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Absolutely important. Number one, the hajjad. Number two, zikr. What zikr? Zikr of the name of the, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we do that? In the heart. Very, very important thing in our sense. Second thing, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Remember what is Allah ta'ala doing? Allah ta'ala is training the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to take that heavy load. Inna sanulqi alayka kaulan saqeena. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, what sort of Rabb was kurisma rabbika? That Rabb who is Rabbul mashriqi wal maghribi la ilaha illahu. Remember, he is that Rabb who is the Rabb of the East and the Rabb of the West. And there is no God but him. This is deen. This is the core of the deen. At the end of the day, this is what you get. When you get that state of tabattul, when you are absolutely cut off from the dunya and you are connected to Allah, then you really, you get that, that the state of La ilaha illallah. How many of us have La ilaha illallah in the heart? Honestly, if I start asking all of us, nobody. Honestly, nobody. If we had that true La ilaha illallah, then would, we would be least concerned about anything going wrong. Least concerned. Honestly, we will not have any depression, we will not have any anxiety, we will not have any issues. Allah Ta'ala is my Rabb, He controls everything. I try to connect to Him by not sinning, by doing a zikr and leave everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will take care of things. Honestly, this is la ilaha illallah. But how? we subhanallah, our eyes are on asbab. We are just looking at the sub of the means and that's it. That's why people steal. That's why people cheat. That's why people, people harm others. Right? That's why people take in trust. Why? Oh, if I put it in the bank, I'm going to get two and a half percent at the end of the year. Looking at the sub of People of La ilaha illallah would do what? They will do exactly the opposite. They will give out. Alright, I have, I have 
1000 pounds, let me share my 200 pounds with this person. I know that this 200 pound is going to come back to me at least 10 times or 70 times or 700 times or more. This is people of La ilaha illallah do. What do we do? Exactly the opposite. Put our things in bank accounts, in trust based accounts. We, we, we cheat, we back, we, we go and harm people, deceive people. SubhanAllah will go and say, for example, I'm doing business with you and say, I am the active partner, you are the sleeping partner. You know, I'll make sure somehow I'm going to make wrong receipts, something to show you. By the way, the profit was not 100,000, it was 50,000. Why? Because I want to put that 50,000 in my pocket. The problem is, no la ilaha illallah. If I was, had la ilaha illallah, I would have shown you every single penny. Here it is, 100,000 pounds with the profit, 50,000 yours, 50,000 mine. Right? Because I know that if I'm honest, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put barakat in everything. That's why people lie. That's why people, every single thing is because we don't have la ilaha illallah. Why don't we follow sunnahs? Subhanallah, people literally they go on the jo- on job interviews and literally they would shave their beards because they would feel that, you know, oh, this, he will not give me a job because I'm a Muslim. I look like a Muslim. Subhanallah. Who is a Razak? That person or Allah? Allah. Right? If I had La ilaha illallah, why would I do any of this sort of thing? Literally people go and, and sit in bars with their bosses, with their, with their managers, because they know that if they would socialize with them at these places, and sometimes they will just take a sip as well. Oh, it's only a sip. Right? Because they know that if they would socialize, they would get their promotion and their salary rises. Allah Akbar. Who is a Razak? This person or, or Allah? Allah. Where is La ilaha illallah? There is no La ilaha illallah in our hearts. Subhanallah. How will we be able to answer this question in our graves? Man Rabbuka. Who is your Rabb? How will we answer? Can, will, we, will we be able to say Allah is my Rabb? I don't know. Very difficult. How will we be able to say Man Nabi Yuka? Who is your Nabi when we don't even follow Sunnahs? How will we be able to say, Ma deenuka, Islam is my deen? When we don't even follow Islam completely, we sin day and night. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Rabbul mashriqi wal maghribi la ilaha illahu. You know, with this zikr, this is the state that you develop, that you, la ilaha illallah comes in your heart. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after you understand that la ilaha illallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fattakhizhu wakila. Take him as your wakil. Put, you have ex- absolute tawakkul in Allah. This is wakalat. What is wakil? Wakil is that you give all of your affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give every single affair to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَاتَّخِذْهُ وَكِيلًا Take him as your wakil. But for that we have to develop that la ilaha illallah in our heart. True la ilaha illallah. And what, how does it come? By doing zikr and tabattul. And doing, controlling our desires. Subhanallah, what does take? Tawakkul. وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever does tawakkun in Allah, he is enough for him. He is enough for him. You know, my shaykh, he gives an example, that for example, there is a small child, say for example, a 10 year old. He tells his friend, you know what, I'm going to Umrah in, in a week. Alright, you're going to Umrah in a week. Did you book your tickets? He said, no. Did you pack your bags? No. Did you book your hotel? No. He said, what sort of, how come you're going? You said you're going in a week, you did not book your hotel, you did not book your tickets, you didn't pack your bags. What does he say? What is his response? My dad did it. My dad booked the tickets, my dad booked the hotels, my dad is packing, my mom is packing. Why should I care? This is tabakkul. This is being a wakil. This is wakalat. That you give all of your affairs to somebody. And you give your affairs to Allah, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ He's enough for you. You don't need to worry about that after that. People say bad things about you, فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Allah Ta'ala will take care. Why should I be worried about it? Prophet Wasallam and all of these people made fun of him. What did Allah Ta'ala say? إِنَّا كَفَيْنَاكَ الْمُسْتَهْزِئِينَ I am enough for you. On your, on your behalf for, this mustahz, for these mustahzi'een, these people who make fun. 
I am enough. You don't worry. Allah Allah Ta'ala becomes the wakil. Fattakhidhu wakila. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. And subhanallah, if you look into the Quran, the way that people, did, they took Allah Ta'ala as their wakil. Amazing. Amazing. Give you a couple of examples. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. He, he was going with his wife and suddenly he saw fire. Right? So he was, subhanallah, he wanted to take care of his wife. And cold winter night and he said, you know, let me go and fetch some fire for you. Look, what is a prophet doing? Prophet taking care of his wife. It's a message. I'm giving you a message. Please take care of your wives. Please. Very important. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said, "Khairukum, khairukum li ahlihi." The best amongst you is the one who is best with his wife, with his family. You know, smiling with a group of friends, it does not make you a good man. If you smile with your wife, that makes you a good man. Please, people who are married who raise their hands, you know, I am in the same boat. Honestly, we all need to be good with our families. Very, very important. It is. It is something that makes us good in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was going and he f- saw some fire. He said, you know, you wait, let me fetch some fire for you. And he went and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke with him. And subhanAllah, he was in extreme joy, state of joy. Allah ta'ala talking to me. Inna ni an Allah, la ilaha illa ana. Then Allah ta'ala asked him a question. He had that stick. Do you know the story of Musa al Islam, right? His stick was an all rounder stick. I always call it an all rounder stick. Can do everything. <laughs> MashaAllah. You know, all rounder in cricket, he can bat, he can bowl, he can feel, he's an all rounder. <laughs> right? So he was, the stick was an all rounder stick, could do everything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Oma tell kabiyamini kaya Musa. What is in your right hand, Musa? Now Musa al Islam, overjoyed. You know, talking to Allah. He could have said, Ya Allah, it's a stick. No, no, no. Qala hiya asai, Ya Allah, it's my stick. Atavakka'u alayha wa ahushu biha ala ghanami wa liya fiha ma'arib ukhra. Ya Allah, you know, I, 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 take, I lean on it. Ya Allah, I take down leaves from the trees for my sheep. And Ya Allah, many other benefits. I take a lot of other uses from it. Just explaining. No need. But you know, he was in that day, overjoyed state. You know, I'm talking to Allah. Let me talk more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all right. You know, you are giving all of these benefits. I'll tell you. Alqiya ya Musa. Throw it. What happened? Suddenly, faida hiya hayyatun tas'a. Suddenly became a snake. Big snake, moving snake. Running. And now Musa alayhi salam, you know, he was thinking, I was telling Allah it's very beneficial. And now it's a snake. He was afraid, scared. Allah Ta'ala said, La takhaf. Don't be scared. Khuzha wa la takhaf. Sanu'iduha seeratah al-ula. I will return it to the same old beneficial stick. What is happening? What are you saying? Is it a magic show? No. Allah Ta'ala teaching Musa Islam something. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is telling him, teaching him, La ilaha illallah. Rabbul Mashriqi wal Maghribi la ilaha illa hu. That's what Allah Ta'ala is teaching. You know, a stick is nothing. Stick has no benefit, no harm by itself. Allah Ta'ala puts benefit in it. The snake that you were thinking that is very harmful, you know, don't worry, it's not the snake. It is me who puts harm in that. You hold it out, make it beneficial. This is what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala was teaching Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. That you rely on Allah, Rabbul Mashriqi wal Maghribi, La ilaha illa hu, Fattakhidhu wakila. That you take him as your wakil, you just give all of your affairs to Allah because Allah Ta'ala is controlling in the Quran. Allah Ta'ala is not just giving us stories by its, for nothing. Allah Ta'ala in reality is teaching me and you. Quran is for me and you. Right? This is La ilaha illa Allah. Don't worry about anything. Just give your affairs to Allah. Sayyidina Musa learned the lesson. He learned the lesson. Now, what happened? Allah, Sayyidina Musa he is in that valley of the, you know, he's with his calm Bani Israel. You know, Bani Israel was very strange calm. 
Subhanallah. You read the first juz, you know, Surah Al-Baqarah, you get so amazed. You know, what a rude calm, rude nation. No other whatsoever. Now they are, they came, you know, Musa, oh our Prophet, you know, we don't have water to drink. We don't have water. We are here in this valley, no water. Give us water. Subhanallah. The more you think about them, you know, honestly, you start feeling that pain in your heart about what did these people do with their, with their Prophet. No water. So Musa al-Islam, now he is there by himself, all of these people asking him for water, as if he is like, subhanAllah, he's, he's, he's there to fulfill all of their needs. What can I do if you don't have water? I am patient, be patient. No, where is water? Now Musa al-Islam is thinking, what do you think? He could have done. All what he had was his all-rounder stick. You know, he could have start drilling the hole, maybe there's water underneath and maybe the water will come out. Right? This is what the intellect says. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Ya Allah, what should I do? Allah ta'ala said, Fadrib bi asakal hajar. Throw the stick on the stone. Now, what does the intellect say? Oh, this is the only thing that I have. If I throw it on the stone, what do you think what will happen? It will break? Ya Allah, what are you telling me? I have one tool, you are asking me to throw it on the stone. Ya Allah, I saw it's going to go. And my beautiful, lovely, darling, all around the stick, I lose that. He had learned the lesson. He threw it. What happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He brought 12 springs from that stone. 12, 12 tribes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought he, he, he brought 12 springs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him that lesson. Just whatever Allah is saying, do it. Fattakhizhu wakila, take him as your, as your wakil. Umayyya yatawakkal ala Allah fawa hasbuhu, he will take care of your affairs. Another story, see the Musa alayhi salam. He's going, Firaun was after him and his army. And these people are going Bani Israel, Musa is now with them. Suddenly they reach the sea or the, or the river Nile. It's a river, huge river. Behind him is the army. In front is the river. What did the people say? Oh, qala ashabu Musa inna la mudrakun. We are strapped. What did you do, Musa? Subhanallah. <laughs> they said, you know, before you, we were in troubles. After you, we are in trouble. What did you do? Very rude people. What did Musa salam say? He said, inna rabbi ma'iya My Rabb is with me. He's going to guide me. And now what do you think? Intellectually. What does he have? All around a stick. Now he's thinking, I have nothing. I have a stick. Let the army come and I'm going to fight. I'm going to just... Hit anybody who is trying to come close to me and I'm going to repel him with the stick. What does Allah Ta'ala say? Musa anidrib bi asaq al-bahar. Throw the stick in the, in the sea. Ya Allah, my stick. I'm going to throw it in the sea. If the army comes, I'll be left with nothing. What will I fight with? Allah, he had learned the lesson. Fattakhidhu bakila. He threw the stick on the on the sea and what happened? Allah Ta'ala created a path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a pathway in the river. And so all of people, the, the Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and all of his ashab they crossed the river. By giving the affairs to Allah, Fattakhizhu Wakila. And subhanAllah, Fir'aun and his army who were coming behind, they also tried to cross the river through that path that was created. What happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala joined the water and they all got drowned. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. That just have true la ilaha illallah and then fattakhidhu wakila. There are many, many examples. Many, many examples. You know, this one beautiful example, I'll tell you that as well. That... This is a hadith in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari, Rahmatullahi, that there was a man who went. There was a man who went to a village. A man he went to a another village, 
sorry. What is the time? One thirty-three. What time is uh, Fajr? Sorry, quarter past three or quarter two three? No, 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 I'm talking about the Fajr start time. Sorry. Ikhtilaf, difference of opinion. No, it's different after every five months. <laughs> yeah, our most calendar says uh, 40, 43 for the Sarita. All right, that's what we take, inshallah. 43. Yeah. All right, I know what's happening. I think what's happening. I think it's in Musaq time that they recommend to stop Suhoor at that time. Yeah. I think so, yeah. All right, 243, inshallah. 243 is 133. So if we stop at, in like, inshallah, 15 minutes, yeah. uh, then we'll have enough time for Suhoor, inshallah. Inshallah. So what was I saying? This hadith in Sahih Bukhari. A man went to a different village. And he had, he didn't know anybody in that village. And he went there for some business. Now he wanted some money. So in that time the money was like what dirhams, dinanirs. So he did not know anybody. So he went to a man, a random man. And he said to him, you know what, I'm in need of money. So I can see you as a righteous man. Can't you please lend some money? Can I borrow some money from you? So this man said, you know, uh, I don't know you. Right? So who do you make, can we make a witness between amongst us two as, as you know, in, in this dealing? So this man said, you know, I don't know anybody in this town. But let's make Allah Ta'ala our witness. Let's make Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala our witness. Good times. The other person said, oh, this man is making Allah Ta'ala as, as, as our witness. I'm fine. Here is the money. You take it. And they made a deal that I'm going to return this money to you on that particular date. So, <coughs> he did whatever he wanted to do with that money and went back to his town. Now on that very day, when he wants to return the money, he, he knew that. He had made Allah Ta'ala the witness. He knew that I have to return money. So, he took the money and was about to go to the village, but there was a river in the middle, in between the two towns. And when he reached there, there was flood in the river. And there was no boat that was crossing the river. Now he was very worried, you know what, I made Allah Ta'ala my witness, I have to return the money to, my, to that person in the other village, what should I do? But, you know, the, the, he couldn't do anything. There was flood, and in flood, you know, when there is flood in the river, you can't, you can't ride a boat. So then he thought of an idea. And what he did was, he, there was a branch of a tree. He took the branch of a tree. He dig the branch and he put the money inside and put a note that, Ya Allah, I made you my witness. So this person, I owe this person this much amount of money. Ya Allah, I, I, you, because I made you my witness, I give it in your hands. And he put that note inside, covered that up, and threw it in the river. It's a hadith in Sahih Bukhari. I'm giving you the gist of it, not exact hadith. Now the other person, on the other side of the river, on the other town, he wanted money. And he knew that this person had to come to me at this, on this very date, and he was not coming. So he got very concerned. And he came out of his house, and he went to that river, which was between the two towns, and he was waiting, maybe a boat is coming. But the boat didn't come and it was almost the end of the day. And when he thought he got very, you know, he lost hope and he was thinking of going back home. But then he said, you know, I'm going back home. What can I do? I lost my money. So let, you know, I have to take some wood back home so that my wife can burn some fire to cook food. And he said, there is not enough time left. You know, let me just get, get some wood from here. And he saw wood coming in the river. He grabbed that wood took it back home, he cut it when he went back home and guess what? There was a note and there was money. And the, and the note said that, Ya Allah, I made you my witness that I have to return this money to this person. I, couldn't, I cannot go. So, so, so you know what should I do? I give it in your hands. And subhanAllah, he got his money. This is a hadith. Prophet Sallallahu said, وَمَيْهِيَ تَبَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ He's enough. This is tabakkul. But for that you have to have that iman. Right? Rabbul Mashriqi wal Maghribi la ilaha illahu. 
Once you have that, فَتَّخِذْهُ وَكِيلًا Take him as your wakil. Give your affairs to him. We have to develop that, my friend. It is one of the steps in the path of spirituality. We all must have this. So we take asbab. It's not that we don't take asbab. We take means. We go out and work with honesty. We go and do businesses with honesty. We do everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. But at the end of the day, if we don't sin, if we do everything according to Sharia, don't try to cheat and save money from, you know, from the places that we don't deserve, then have tawakkun in Allah and Allah ta'ala will give you more than that what you expect. This is... This is Islam. This is the Subhanallah, we are trying to save our taxes, you know, and putting on wrong figures. Subhanallah, people that take cash and don't they don't they don't put in the right figures in the tax forms and all of that, thinking that they're going to save money at the end of the day. I can tell you, my friends, money will not be saved. Money is written in your taqdeer, it is in your destiny. Whatever is written is going to come to you, even if you try to run away from that. You know, it's going to come to you. Tell, tell you a story. You know, there was a one man who was sitting in the masjid and the Imam Sahib in the Juma Khutbah were saying, you know, your risk is written. Your risk is written and he, it will come to you, it must come to you. So this man, he was, he said, no, 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 what do you mean that risk is written, it must come to me, I'm not going to take my risk. I'm not taking my risk. How come Mulana Sahib you are saying that risk is written? So he went back home. So his mother had cooked food. So he said, I'm not eating this food. No, no, beta, please, my son, eat it. I'm not eating it. You cannot force me to eat. So when the mother says it's too much, so he left the house and went into a jungle. So the mother came. You know, mothers always have soft hearts. <laughs> please, my son, you are hungry. Please eat. No, no, I'm not eating. I will see who will force me to eat. So the mother said, you know, this is the food, I am putting it here, whenever you feel hungry, please eat it. So this man, his, he got tired, he was lying down and he could smell food. Huh? So we were coming down the street, you know, at the, just before Asar and we could see all of these halwa puris and barbecues and biryanis and so on. <laughs> Attracting us, you know, subhanAllah, feeling like we start feeling hungry. So, khair. so this person, he said, you know, let me not lie down with the food. I'll go and lie down in, under another tree I'll, at a certain distance. So he left that place and lied down at another place. So there were a few thieves there. And they came and they smelled food. And they were hungry as well. So they said, all right, let's eat. You know, their, their leader, he said, no, 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 don't eat because there may be poison in this food. They might have, he, this person might have put this food to capture us. They so don't eat. And he said, you know what, whenever anybody tries to do that, he, he must be around looking at all of what we are doing. Go and search for anybody. And they searched and they found this man lying down under a tree. They woke him up. What's up? You know, come, you have put that food for us. No, 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 I did not. There is poison in that food. No, there is none. So he said, no, you have to prove that there is no poison. You put it. There is no poison. So he said, eat it. He said, no, I'm not eating. Who will force me to eat? <laughs> you have to eat. You have to show us that there is no poison. I'm not eating. If they took out their slipper and started beating him, eat. <laughs> he had no choice but start eating. So he went back home, you know, after that, and then, you know, next Jummah came, and he went to the Jummah prayers, and he sat right in front of the member, and Maulana Sahib, he did his Jummah khutbah. After he was done, he said, Maulana Sahib, you always tell half things. What did I tell half? The last Friday you said that Allah Ta'ala, your risk is written, and you must eat it. This was half thing. What is the full thing? If you don't eat it, you have to be beaten by slippers in order to eat that. This is the full thing. <laughs> SubhanAllah, risk is written, my friends. What are we worried about? Allah Ta'ala will give that risk to us. All what we have to do is do tabakkul in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It is running after us. We have to take the sabab 
But at the very same time, you have to have tabakkul in Allah. Share your risk with other people. Share, the, share whatever Allah Ta'ala has given you. Spend it in the, in the, in the path of Allah. Allah Ta'ala will give you. Allah, this is, this is la ilaha illallah. This is la ilaha illallah. This is what the, the you know, tazkiyah, spirituality, the sabbaf, it brings that iman in the heart. But you have to make a struggle. This is what we all need to do, my friends. We have to do some mujahida. And we are not asking anything except three things. Tahajjud, dhikr, leave sins. Please make a struggle to leave every single sin from your life. And then, have tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single thing will be sorted. Dunya, qabr, akhirat. Every single thing. I can tell you that. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He carries on. He said, وَصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ These people are saying all of these things. Remember, one of the things that I said, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Ya أَيُّهَا muzammil Because He was sad. He had wrapped Himself in that cloak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ Whatever they are saying, be patient. Be patient. Doesn't matter. Leave them. And what else? وَهْجُرْهُمْ هَجْرًا جَمِيلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, you know, deal with them in the beautiful way. Allahu Akbar. This is the end. وَصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ وَهْجُرْهُمْ هَجْرًا جَمِيلًا if you say anything wrong to me, my deen doesn't tell me to reply back you, to you in the same bad way. It's not my deen. My deen is what? Idfa' billati hiya ahsan. Repel the evil with something that's good. What will happen for izalladi bayna ka wa bayna hu adawatun ka anna hu waliyun hameem? That animosity will go away. You know, if you talk to me in a bad way, I smile at you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the result, Allah ta'ala will remove that animosity from your heart and you will come to me in a loving way. Subhanallah. What do we do? Alright, you hit me with stone, I'm going to hit you, hit you with brick. Huh? What do you think? I'm not strong, I'm weak. Let me, you told me, you know, five, five things, I'm going to tell you ten. So this is not the... وَصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ Be patient on whatever they are saying. وَهْجُرْهُمْ هَجْرًا جَمِيلًا be, be beautiful, deal with them in a beautiful way. This is the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And leave me alone to deal with all of these people who deny the people who have who are rich. You know, give them respite for a while. I'm not punishing them right now. Let's give them some time. Yeah, but I'm I'm alone to deal with them. You don't worry. You just tr- keep on dealing with them in a good way. وَهْجُرُمْ هَجْرًا جَمِيلًا وَذَرْنِي وَالْمُكَذِّبِينَ Leave me alone. I'm, I'm going to deal with them. Allahu Akbar. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, if these people, they deny, they make fun of you, look what is happening. إِنَّ لَدَيْنَ أَنْكَالًا وَجَحِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you know, inna ladaina ankala wa jahima. You know, with us, I'm just thinking what's the best way to translate that. He said, that, I mean, in reality, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that I'm going to put them in the flaming fire. And they will be giving, given that food that will choke. And they will get painful punishment. You know, يَوْمَ تَرْجِفُ الْأَرْضُ وَالْجِبَالُ وَكَانَتَ الْجِبَالُ كَثِيبًا مَهِيلًا When will they get that punishment on that day when the earth and the mountains will start, will quick? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the mountains will turn into a slipping heap of sand. وَكَانَتَ الْجِبَالُ كَثِيبًا مَهِيلًا You know, the mountains will crush. That day is coming and they're all going to get their, get the... What get get the recompensation for what they are doing, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Inna arsalna alaykum rasulan shahidan alaykum kama arsalna ila Fir'aun rasula wa afasa Fir'aun rasula fa akhznahu akhzam wabila." That I have sent you as a messenger, just like I sent to Fir'aun a messenger, just like that. 
I have sent you as a messenger. Deep ayat. We all talk about the story of Musa alayhi salam and Fir'aun, right? And we get so upset at what did Fir'aun do. In, but we always forget that we have been sent a messenger as well. This one Allah Ta'ala is saying, Inna is arsalna ilaykum rasulan. Shahidan alaykum, who is a witness over you, kama arsalna ila Fir'aun rasula. You hate Fir- Fir'aun and Musa alayhi salam, you know, Fir'aun so much because he rejected his messenger, Musa. What about you? Don't you reject your messenger? Don't you reject your messenger? Honestly. He tells us all of these things. How many of us take all of his things? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْفَةٌ حَسَنًا And your messenger is, is your role model. And what do we do? Our role model is who? I don't know who. These movie actors, you know, these players, these cricket players, these football players, these are our role models. So why do we hate Fir'aun? We are Fir'aun. Isn't it? Inna arsalna ilaykum rasulan shahidan alaykum kama arsalna ila Fir'aun rasula. And Allah Ta'ala says, فَأَسَى فِرْعَوْنُ الرَّسُولَ Fir'aun rejected his messenger. فَأَخَذْنَاهُ أَخْذًا وَبِينَ And Allah Ta'ala says, I seized him. I captured him. I gave him that punishment. In other words, Allah Ta'ala is saying, if you reject your Rasul, then don't think that you will be saved. You don't think that you will be saved. When you don't follow Sharia and Sunnah, and just like Fir'aun was punished at the end of the day, don't think that you will be saved as well. You also have been sent a messenger. You don't see that messenger with your eyes, right? But he is the messenger to all of you as well, to all of us. So we have to also make sure that we should believe in him, otherwise we are acting like Fir'auns. All of us are acting like Fir'auns. So this is something that we all need to work on, my friends. Right? This is, this is what all what the Sahuf is about. It is not about anything. But it is about developing that iman in the heart. That true iman that we can leave our sins and so that we can trust in Allah, take Him as our wakil, absolute trust, leave our sins, connect to Allah and then see the miracles. Honestly, we have not yet tasted iman. If we had truly tasted iman, we would, we would not be doing what we are doing. You will all, every single person would be that role model. Honestly, but everybody is, none of us is, because we have not tasted Iman. So please, my friends, we all need to wake up. And inshallah ta'ala, that is the whole idea behind purification. This taskiya, taking a shaykh, taking bed with a shaykh, doing your askar, your jali mamulat, muraqba, other tasbihat, and, and you know, deal, and working with your shaykh in order to develop your heart. Because Allah ta'ala wants all of us to be that person that Allah Ta'ala is mentioning in the Quran. Quran is for me and you. It's for nobody else. Right? It is for me and you. Allah Ta'ala wants, He's going to deal with us in the same way as He was dealing with the people who came like thousand years ago. These were the people of Iman. But where do we stand? What are we doing? In the month of Ramadan, Subhanallah. In honesty, as I said, that at one time I get so happy when people are coming in the masjid. But at the very same time, I, you know, I, I, I feel so bad. I think there were more people in Maghrib than there were in Taraweeh. Subhanallah. There were more people in Maghrib than, than they, were, they were in Taraweeh. People take Taraweeh as a burden. 20 rakahs. Subhanallah. People run. People. So when they can't even take this heat that's in this room. What is this heat? Is this heat? No. Subhanallah. Think about the heat of the, of the fire. People can't even take that. SubhanAllah, people don't even want to listen. People don't even want to develop themselves. This is our state. You all are lucky, honestly. Allah Ta'ala chose you to come and sit here. There are many, many people, SubhanAllah, who came and nobody wanted to sit because who cares? I know, or I don't even care. They're just living the same old lifestyle that they were living. But def- I mean, if Allah Ta'ala gave us tawfiq to try to understand this, you know, we should make a commitment as well to change ourselves. We should not be living the same old lifestyle anymore, please. Be people of Allah. This is Quran, Azim al-Shan, for me and you. This is the month, Shahru Ramadan, Alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. 
This is a month when Quran was revealed. Quran was revealed to me and you. So that we change our lifestyle, we become people of Allah. And then see, Allah Ta'ala does not want to punish us. I can tell you that. Allah Ta'ala says, then what will I get out of punishment, punishing you? What will I get out of that? Allah Ta'ala doesn't get any benefit by punishing us. But we are the ones who actually invite that. We are the ones who actually invite that by not listening. It is we, it's for our benefit when we follow deen. And Allah Ta'ala will bless us in this dunya, I can tell you that. You will see blessings in your life. You will see blessings with your own life. I've seen people who follow Shariat completely, I've seen blessings coming in their life. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, amazing. Somebody came to me the other day, he said, you know, Maulana Sahab, he always talk about, so the way the people talk is amazing as well. Maulana Sahab, you know, you always talk about cutting off from dunya. I've seen all of these Maulanas driving Mercedes. What is that? I said, my friend, when did I say that you shouldn't be driving Mercedes? Do drive Mercedes. Right? What all I said is, don't have the love of Mercedes in your heart, but you can drive Mercedes. What's wrong with that? Live? You know, Sayyidina Usman bin Affan, such a rich man. Sayyidina Abdurrahman bin Auf, radiallahu anhu, anhum, such a rich man. But despite of them being rich, they, were, they don't have love of that wealth in their heart. They were ready, giving out every single thing that they have, sharing with the community. Right? But subhanAllah, you know, Allah Ta'ala will give you dunya as well. Allah Ta'ala will bless you in this dunya as well, inshaAllah Ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, also will bless you in the hereafter. I always tell people, you know, I, have you ever heard about any Molvi Sahib who has who is died with hunger? No. <laughs> right? No Molvi dies with hunger. They are famous for halwas. <laughs> Not hunger. Huh? SubhanAllah. Halwa is directly proportional to a Molvi. Huh? SubhanAllah. Why? Allah Ta'ala gives them. Feeds them. Allah Ta'ala, you try to follow deen, and Allah Ta'ala will bless your life, inshallah Ta'ala. Bless your life. But for that, you need only to make a struggle. Some, some struggle concern, inshallah. Inshallah, we'll finish after, after Fajr. Akhru da'wana, and alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin. Inshallah, before leaving, if we can just recite the kalimat of tawbah, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our mashaykh have taught us a few kalimat, few words, which is basically the tajdeed of our iman, renewal of our iman, then asking Allah Ta'ala that He forgives us of all the sins that we have been doing until now. Inshallah Ta'ala, if we do it with sincerity, with ikhlas, with an intention of true tawbah, we have a hope from Allah Ta'ala that on this very blessed night of Ramadan, He will forgive all of us. Anybody wants to take bayt in the sulsala, these are the same kalimah, they can make the niyat of bayt. Inshallah, others can recite it with the niyat of Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadil ladhin astafa amma ba'd So we can recite this kalimat Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim La ilaha illallah Muhammad rasulullah Amantu billahi Wa malaikatihi Wa kutubihi Wa rusulihi Wa al yawmil akhiri Wa al qadri khayrihi وشره من الله تعالى والبعث بعد الموت آمنت بالله كما هو بأسمائه وصفاته وقبلت جميع أحكامه إقرار باللسان وتصديق بالقلب أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أستغفر الله ربي من كل ذنب وأتوب إليه برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين but these are the kalimat. There are few mamulat that our mashayikh have taught. You know, one is doing istighfar morning, evening, every day, hundred times each. Astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu In the morning, hundred times. In the evening, hundred times. Whenever you feel, 
that you have time. Second is Durood Sharif. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ahli Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim. That's also hundred times morning, evening. Third, reciting Quran. Even if it's small, one page, two pages, quarter juice, half juice, one juice, whatever. But do open Quran, recite a little bit every day. And fourth is what I mentioned, muraqaba. Right? The way to do muraqaba again is that you close your eyes. You know, have this intention that as if Allah Ta'ala's mercy is falling on the heart, as if the heart is doing the zikr, Allah, 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 and I'm listening. We don't say it with the tongue. So, Bansani cannot, don't say it with the tongue. Have just this intention. No visualization, nothing. Intention as if Allah's mercy is coming on the heart, as if heart is doing Allah, 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 as if I'm listening. Focus on the left side of your chest, a little bit lower on your chest, towards the side, here. Alright? And... Do 10-15 minutes every day at least. Inshallah you will see the power of it. Four mamula, that's it. And all what I said, istizar of Allah. Always think that Allah Ta'ala is there. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ He is with you wherever you are. Masnoon du'as, everything sunnah Inshallah. Outward sunnahs, inward sunnahs. Inshallah the way that he pause and look, we should make ourselves like that. And the way that his character was, his akhlaq was, Inshallah we have to develop that akhlaq. Alright? إن شاء الله دعاك الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مصرف القلوب سرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكر إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين يا رحمة الرحيمين please accept this gathering from all of us يا الله these people have يا الله come and sit have sat يا الله have sat in this gathering يا الله out of their sincerity their talab, their desire, their ikhlas. Ya Allah, because of their ikhlas, their sincerity, please accept this gathering from all of us. Ya Allah, ignore our shortcomings, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, we do tawbah from all the sins that we have been doing until now. Ya Allah, we beg you, Ya Rahman Rahimeen, Ya Akram al Akrameen, that you forgive us on this night. Ya Allah, every single night we have been told that you forgive, Ya Allah, around a million people, Ya Allah, in the month of Ramadan. Ya Rabbi Rahimeen, you must have forgiven a lot of people tonight as well. Ya Allah, please don't forget us, Ya Rabbi Rahimeen. Ya Allah, truly we are the ones who have oppressed ourselves. Ya Rabbi Rahimeen, we beg you that you please forgive us and also save us from the fire as well, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi Rahimeen, Ya Akram al Ya Allah, this month of Ramadan, where everybody becomes so generous. Mm. Ya Allah, you are the most generous of all who show generosity. Ya Allah, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen, please, Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, please, shower your mercy upon all of us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, give us the best of the dunya, the best of the akhirat, with khair, with barakat, with afiyat, with busan. Ya Allah, this is what I've learned, this is what I've been telling. Ya Allah, that you share with people and Allah Ta'ala will give you a lot. Ya Rabbi Rahimeen. Ya Allah, keep my words, Ya Allah. People, Ya Allah, whoever gives, Ya Allah, whoever shares, Ya Allah, give them the best of the dunya and the best of the akhirat. Ya Allah, give them more than what they expect. Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, give them, Ya Allah, give their children, give their generations, Ya Allah, to come. Ya Rabbi Rahimeen, with afiyat, with khair, with barakat, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, save our iman. Please save Iman of our children, Ya Allah. Please save Iman of everybody who is going to come until the Day of Judgment from our generations. Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, everybody who has asked for du'as. Ya Allah, you know their needs more than we do. We beg you, Ya Allah, please give them more than what they are in need of. With barakat, with afiyat, with khair, Ya Allah. People who are sick spiritually or physically, give them perfect cure, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please give us the... Ya Allah, Iman, please be content with us in this dunya, and especially at the time of our death. Ya Allah, allow us to recite Kalima as our last word. Ya Allah, please make our graves from the gardens of paradise. Please make the questions of the graves easy for us. Please fill our graves with nur, with light, make it spacious, Ya Allah. Hell on the day of judgment, we beg you that you please make us from your muqarrab, 
people, Ya Allah, give our books in our right hands. Please give us the shade of your throne. Please give us the water from the hands of your beloved, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Grant all of us his intercession, Ya Allah. And let us all please enter into paradise without any questioning. And Ya Allah, give us a space in the blessed feet of your beloved, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And most of it all, Ya Allah, grant all of us your perfect vision, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahimeen, we don't know how to ask. Ya Allah, we are those beggars of yours, Ya Allah, who don't even have etiquettes to ask. Ya Allah, but despite of that fact, Ya Allah, that we don't know, Ya Allah, please, you know our needs. Ya Allah, accept us for the service of your deen. Ya Allah, in your protection, with afiyat, in your ni'mat, with your blessings. Ya Allah, provide asbab from ghayb, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Please allow us to, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, to build madaris, to build khanqas, to build masajid, to build maraqis in every single corner of the world. Ya Allah, accept every single one of them. And Ya Allah, make them the source of the spread of your beautiful words, your beautiful deen in every single corner of the world. Ya Allah, Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami wal alim wa tub alayna ya maulana innaka anta tawab rahim sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqihi Sayyidina Muhammad على آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا رحمة الرحمين الحمد لله رب العالمين.